At dawn they made ready to go on. There was an ancient highway that ran down from Isengard to the crossings. And after they had ridden some miles, the highway became a wide street paved with great flat stones, squared and laid with skill. No blade of grass was seen in any joint. Deep gutters filled with trickling water ran down on either side. Suddenly a tall pillar loomed up before them. It was black and set upon it was a great stone carved and painted in the likeness of a long white hand. Its finger pointed north. Not far now they knew that the gates of Isengard must stand. Now Gandalf rode to the great pillar of the hand which stood before the city gates. Forward to Isengard! The hand is changed even as you pass. It's stained now with dried blood. And its nails have turned red. Unheeding, Gandalf rode on into the mist, and reluctantly the company followed him. All about them now, as if there had been a sudden flood, wide pools of water lay beside the road. At last, Gandalf halted and beckoned to them. See the doors of Isengard! They're hurled and twisted on the ground. And all about, stone cracked and splintered into countless jagged shards. Ruinous heaps of them. What does it mean? The arch there. What was a tunnel is broken open, and there are great rents and breaches torn in the cliffs. The towers about have been beaten into dust. If the great sea had risen in wrath and fallen on the hills with storm, it could have worked no greater ruin. Uh, see, the water steams. Uh, the power of Saruman has been overthrown. But how? They noticed close beside them a rubble heap. And suddenly they were aware of two small figures lying on it at their ease, grey-clad, hardly to be seen among the stones. There were bottles and bowls and platters laid beside them, as if they had just eaten well and now rested from their labor. One seemed to sleep. The other, with crossed legs and arms behind his head, leaned back against a broken rock and sent from his mouth long wisps and little rings of thin blue smoke. Welcome, my lords, to Isengard. We're the door wardens. Mary is my name, and my companion, who, alas, is overcome with weariness, get up, Pippin, is Peregrine Chook. The Lord Sir Ruman is, er, uh, within... But at the moment he is uh, uh, closeted with one worm tongue, or doubtless he would be here to welcome such honourable guests. Doubtless he would. And was it Sir Oman that ordered you to guard his damaged doors and watch for the arrival of guests when your attention could be spared from plate and bottle? No, good sir. The matter quite escaped him. Uh, he, he has been much occupied. Our orders come from Treebeard, who has taken over the management of Isengard. Yeah. He commanded me to welcome the Lord of Rohan with fitting words. Uh, I've done my best. <laughs> and what about your companions? What about Legolas and me? You rascals, oh. you woolly-footed and wool-painted truants. Oh. A fine hunt you've led us. Two hundred leagues through fen and forest, battle and death to rescue you. And here we find you feasting and idling and smoking. Oh. Smoking! Where did you come by the weeds, you villains? Hammer and tongs, I'm so torn between rage and joy that if I don't burst, it'll be a marvel. You speak for me, Gimli. Though I would sooner learn how they came by the wine. One thing you've not found in your hunting, and that's brighter wits. Here you find us sitting on a field of victory amid the plunder of armies, and you wonder how we came by a few well-earned comforts. Well-earned? I can't believe that. Oh, it cannot be doubted that we witnessed the meeting of dear friends. Uh, so these are the lost ones of your company, Gandalf. Yes. The days are fated to be filled with marvels. Aren't these the halflings, the Hulbeitlan? Hobbits, if you please, Lord. Ah, hob hobbits? Uh, the name sounds not unfitting, so. Uh, no report that I had uh, does justice to the truth. You were gracious, Lord. 
or I hope that I may so take your word. I had not heard that they, they spouted smoke from their mouths. That's not surprising, for it's an art which we've not practised for more than a few generations. It was Tobold Hornblower of Longbottom in the South Farthing who first grew the true pipeweed in his garden, oh, about 1070 according to our reckoning, how Toby came by the plant is... Oh, you uh, don't know your danger, Theoden. These hobbits will sit on the edge of ruin and discuss the pleasures of the table or the small doings of their fathers and great-grandfathers if you encourage them with undue patience. Uh, where, where's well, Treebeard, Mary? Away on the north side, I believe. Ah. He went to get a drink of clean water. Yes. Well, Theoden, will you ride with me to find Treebeard? You must go round about, but it isn't far. When you see Treebeard, you'll learn much. For Treebeard is Fangorn. Oh, oh, no. well, I, I will come with you. Uh, farewell, my hobbits. May we meet again in my house. Uh, come, Gandalf. Right. That's the king of Rohan. An old fellow. Very polite.